Welcome to Crosstalk Solutions. My name's Chris, and this is Free PBX 101 version 15, part 28, where we're going to be talking about IVRs. Now, IVR stands for Interactive Voice Response, and even if you've never heard that term before, you definitely know what an IVR is, because anytime you call into a company that uses an IVR, you are played an announcement that gives you options for where you want to go, such as, thank you for calling ABC Company, press one for sales, two for support, three for customer service, four for accounting, etc., etc. That is an IVR. So we're going to hop right into how to build our first IVR. But first, if you guys are enjoying this series, make sure you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions so you don't miss any of the future videos that are coming out. Also, I can be found on Twitter at Crosstalk SOL. Check over there for all of the latest updates. Jumping over to my desktop, here we have the design that we've been working on. And we've kind of been building this from the back to the front or backwards to forwards, right? Meaning that we've built all of these voicemail boxes. We have our announcements. We have our ring groups and our cues. And now we're going to sort of start to tie all of that stuff together. And in our IVR, we're going to have a greeting that says, thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin. We already recorded this greeting a few videos ago. If you know your party's extension, you may dial at any time. Press 1 for sales, 2 for customer service, or press 3 for accounting. If you would like to speak to the receptionist, please press 0 or stay on the line. That is going to be the announcement for our IVR. And of course, if they press 1, they're going to go to the sales queue. If they press 2, they're going to go to the customer service queue, and so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and dive in and start programming this IVR. From the dashboard of Free PBX, we want to go to Applications and then IVR. You can also use the contextual search in the upper right hand corner. And we're going to say Add IVR. For the name, we're just going to say Main. We're going to call the description Main IVR. And like usual, I'm not going to cover absolutely every single setting on this page. There's just a lot going on here. I'm going to cover the most common options, anything that I don't cover just assume that you can leave default, but of course you always have the sort of rollover help if you're interested in those different settings. Okay, so for announcement, this is the system recording that we are playing when someone lands in this IVR. And we already recorded it a few videos ago. We're gonna call it, uh, and it was called Main IVR. So we're gonna choose Main IVR as our recording. Enable Direct Dial. This is an interesting setting, and this is going to take us on a little bit of a detour. So what this means is when someone hits your IVR and they start to hear the greeting, thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, press 1 for sales, press 2 for support, etc., etc., are we allowing those callers to direct dial extension numbers within the organization or not? So if you say disabled, they cannot dial extension numbers. If you say enabled, they can dial any extension number. And then the third option here is all employees. Now we have not in this series yet talked about directories that can be used within free PBX. So I set up this sort of temporary quick directory just to show you this detour here. So if I say all employees, that refers to a directory that I have created. Let me go ahead and save the IVR as it stands so far. And then let's go to Applications and Directory so that you can see what I'm talking about. So here's the All Employees directory that I set up. I set it as a default directory, and we want new users that are created to automatically be put into this directory. If I edit the directory, we can see all of our different users down below. And you have various options. For instance, if you know someone uh, goes into a directory and they don't find the user they're looking for, they'll go out to the receptionist ring group. That's if you're using the directory as a destination. Like you know, within your IVR, you could say press four for the company directory, and then that would come into here and allow people to search for users that they want to speak with. Now, this directory is an interesting option because what if you are the CEO of a company and you don't want external callers to be able to direct dial your extension or even know your extension, right? So let's scroll down here to Michael Scott. First of all, we can manually put in a different name. And maybe we wanted to add a new entry if people don't know how to spell Scott, right? We can add a different entry with an alternate spelling that still gets to the same person. We also have the option of changing 
the extension that they go to. So if someone dials into the directory and they hit the, they look up Michael Scott, maybe we want to send them to extension 201 instead, which would be, who's 201? Well, I don't have a 201 here. All right, we'll set it to say, uh, you know, 209. Doesn't matter, right? So maybe if your CEO has a, an administrative assistant and you want anyone who direct dials the CEO from the IVR to go to the assistant instead of directly to the CEO, you can do that. Or of course, you can just delete that entry out entirely. So what that means is when people go to the IVR, let's go back to our IVR, edit it. If we have this set to that all employees directory, we've deleted Michael Scott. So they would have the ability to dial everyone else except for Michael Scott. You cannot dial Michael Scott directly because we deleted Michael Scott out of this uh, directory that we're using for the en uh, enable direct dial function of the IVR. Now we have a timeout value, right? So basically if we go back to our design, we can see up here that we have a few different settings. If someone dials zero, they go to the receptionist ring group. If someone times out, they go to the receptionist ring group. And if they press an invalid digit, they go to the receptionist ring group. So the timeout value here is basically how many seconds are we considering a timeout to be? And that's basically like we play the recording and now we're listening for input, right? Are they gonna press one for sales? Are they gonna press two for support? We don't know, so we're listening for that input. Now 10 seconds is a little bit long. I'm gonna bump that down to five seconds here. And then let's keep moving because we're gonna come back to this timeout value. It's gonna be important in just a little bit. Now here we have some invalid as well. So invalid is if we press one for sales, two for support, three for customer service, four for accounting, what happens if someone presses five, right? So five is not a digit that we have as an option in our IVR. So that's considered an invalid digit. So what happens when someone hits an invalid digit? Well we probably want to just send them right back to the top of the IVR so that they can hear all of the options again. And how many times are we allowing them to hit an invalid digit, right? It comes with three by default. That's a little much, right? So for me, I just say, let's give them one invalid retry. So basically they press five, they don't get anyone, right? It goes back to the top of the IVR. They press five again for some reason. This person needs help, okay? So let's just send them to our receptionist ring group at that point. Uh, you can choose a different recording for invalid. So by default, you know, like for instance, when I set up an IVR uh, uh, on my own, if someone presses invalid, I might want to change that recording to say, oh, you pressed a bad digit, dude. You could totally do that if you want, right? Or you can just leave the invalid recording default. And then our invalid destination, where are we sending these folks after they've hit a bad invalid key, they tr got a retry, then they hit a bad invalid key again. Well, let's go ahead and send them over to ring groups reception, All right? So basically if they screw up twice, they're gonna go straight to our receptionist ring group where someone can sort of manually help them. I should also say we want to enable this setting that says append announcement to invalid. After playing the invalid retry recording, the system will replay the main IVR announcement. So it'll say something like the defaults, like you've entered an invalid character, and then it's gonna replay the original IVR. Thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin Paper Company, press one, blah, 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 right? So that's kind of how that all ties together. Similarly, if we go back to our design, you can see that we have a timeout value. So basically that's accounting for what happens if the caller doesn't press anything. Right, if they're just sitting there and it's just dead air, we're not getting any DTMF tones, that's the actual touch tones that you hear uh, when someone presses digits while you're on a call. What happens if we don't get any of those digits? What if they're dialing in from a rotary phone, right? And they don't have the ability to dial digits. Well, we still wanna do something with those callers. So for timeout retries, let's also bump that to one. Basically we're saying, play the announcement, wait to hear, wait those five seconds to hear if they press anything then say you have timed out, right? The default retry recording. Then we're going to play our main IVR announcement again. We're gonna wait that five seconds again. And instead of keeping, you know, keeping on doing that and looping and looping and looping, we're just gonna do that through uh, one repeat. And then we're gonna send them to, again, our receptionist 
ring group. We also want to append the announcement on timeout. So invalid and timeout, there's a lot of different settings for each of those two things, but it's really basic, right? If someone presses a bad key, we're gonna play our IVR recording again. If they press a bad key again, we're gonna send them to our receptionist ring group. Same thing with timeout. If they listen to the recording, don't press any digits, listen to the recording again, they still don't press any digits, send them to the receptionist ring group. Okay, and that's basically all that these settings mean. And it's a lot of settings for just two really simple features of the IVR. Now at the bottom under IVR entries, we're gonna to get to the meat and potatoes of this IVR setup, because this is where we say, these are the digits that someone can press to get to various locations. So if we look at our design again, if they press zero, they're going to the receptionist ring group. If they press one, they're going to queue sales. And then once they're in queue sales, we've already set up that queue so that if they time out or don't get to a person in that queue, they're gonna to go to a voicemail box. So we don't need to configure any of these destinations over here. Those are already all done. We just need to configure what's coming off of the IVR. So we have option zero, one, two, and three. So let's go ahead and add those in here. We're gonna add some more. And so the digits pressed are zero, one, two, and three. So for zero, we're going to our receptionist ring group. Uh, for one, we're going to sales queue. For two, we're going to customer service queue. So we're gonna say queue, sales queue. For two, we're going to queue, where did it go? Queue, customer service queue. And then for three, we're going to announcements, accounting, no answer. Wait, is that right? No, I take it back. We're going to ring group accounting. See, this is why it helps to document things. All right, so here we go. Ring groups, accounting, there we go. And let's go ahead and submit that IVR and apply config. All right, our IVR has been saved, but let's go ahead and go back into that IVR. I wanna do one other thing down here. So we have the digits that someone can press and all of these digits are announced in our system recording. Press zero for the receptionist, press one for customer service, et cetera, et cetera. But you can put digits in an IVR that you don't announce as part of the system recording. One good example is if you wanna have a way for users to call into the IVR, your own internal users, and then dial their voicemail box. So let's do that now. We're gonna add a hidden IVR entry of star. And in this hidden IVR entry, we're gonna say feature code admin and then we're gonna say dial voicemail. So it's the equivalent to dialing star 98, which if you remember from our voicemail section, star 98 is how you can check someone else's voicemail box. Or in other words, star 98 is gonna prompt you for both the voicemail box number as well as the voicemail box password. So now someone dials in, you know, Jim Halpert dials in from the outside world they, he, Jim hears, uh, thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. Jim can hit star and it'll say, please enter your mailbox number. And then Jim can enter in his own mailbox credentials and listen to his voicemail messages. Okay, so that one's done. Let's go ahead and say, uh, say submit and apply config. All right, now it's time to test out our IVR. In order to do that, I'm going to change our main inbound route to point at the IVR instead of directly to this extension right here, which is how we last left it configured. We are gonna cover inbound routes in more detail in a future video, uh, but for now, let's just make a quick change. We're gonna go to connectivity, inbound routes. So for our main inbound route here, we're gonna edit it. And then for the destination, instead of going directly to extension 200, we're gonna change this to our IVR main and submit and apply. Okay, now that that change is completed, I'm gonna dial into the outside number and it should go straight into that IVR. Let's go ahead and try it. Thank you for calling Dunder Mifflin. If you know your party's extension, you may dial it at any time. Press one for sales. Let's go ahead and press one. And we went into our sales queue and I can see a sales call coming through on Michael's extension. Hello, hello, test, hello, test, hello. test. 
And there we go, our IVR is working. So in real life, what you would wanna do is go through every single one of your options manually, make sure that they are working, that they're getting to the proper destinations and whatnot, but really that's about it. Now I just set up the phone system to dial directly into that IVR, but we still have a little bit more work to do because we only go to that IVR during business hours. After hours, we wanna do something else. So that's our next video. It's gonna be on time groups and time conditions. Make sure you like this video if you got a lot out of it and subscribe to Crosstalk Solutions so you don't miss any more videos in the series. All right, we will see you in the next video.